Good evening to everyone. As noted before, Deep Green Crisis is a proud sponsor of this award annually. And tonight, I call on Nathan Bear Connor. But for some reason, over the last two weeks, myself and Nathan been running into each other, and I didn't know that this was Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Even sitting at the table tonight, we sat together for a few minutes, and I said, "This has to be Nathan, you know." But I think Nathan and Bear knowing two different names is something else. So tonight, Nathan, pleased to meet you again. And on behalf of Deep Enterprises, we present to you with this honor award. And also a check of 400 US dollars. Opportunity. 
this award was curated to specifically highlight a special young lady. Well, it's a young lady tonight, and actually it's been a young lady twice. And I would just like to say we appreciate you for all you do. You're definitely a shining light. And with that, I would like to welcome Aisha. That means the event is well attended, but give her a round of applause as she comes. and those lynched, so that we today can enjoy a freedom 
they only dream about. Lord, bless all gathered here this evening and help us to live together in peace and unity. Amen. Thank you. Can I have a round of applause for some of that beautiful prayer? You know, a question frequently asked is what is the importance of Black History Month? And Black History Month was created specifically to honor the contributions of the people of African descent to history. Among them are people like Madam C.J. Walker, who was the first American woman to become a self-made millionaire, and George Washington Cargo, who created nearly 300 products from the peanuts. And we have our own black history heroes here, right here in Angola, you know. So it's a time where we can remember those persons uh, and celebrate them. You know, those that are past, those that are still here with us, you know. And it's always a time to, you know, give them their flowers while they're like, my grandmother will always say that. All right. So we'll move swiftly into our theater arts and culture award presentation. Sponsored by Webster Law. Can I have a representative? Yes. Lovely Mrs. Webster. Huh? Good evening, everyone. You know, it's very special this evening. 22 years. It's significant because it's one year after we get to maturity. So to have this event and to celebrate it at this moment is special. Let's honor. In fact, many of you, like us, I'm sure, have been here 22 years even. And there's something that we will recognize that from Margaret Mead. It says, and we use this from the very beginning. And yes, Webster is the longest continuous supporter of Sunshine Theater. But we say never doubt, and you know this, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world because it's the only thing that's ever done. That's Margaret Mead. And you hear it every year from Webster. And you know, when we repeat things like that, we have to really look at our awardees with that mind. And I want to put, again, your hands together, say, put them together for all the awardees. And looking back in the next, um, from the future, looking back, you will say, well, I, I knew that, I knew that, I knew that. These were great people, and they would have established their legacies. And to recognize them early on is a wonderful thing. I am so thrilled and honored and feel so privileged that the Pierre Award, the arts nominee is Actually, not the nominee, but the awardee is Sandra Liddy. Sandra Liddy, yes, and we're going to have loads of opportunities um, to put your hands together for her. But when I heard that she was the person that had been selected, I, I was happy, not just because she, I see her everywhere, and we know what a wonderful gift she has, and how you know, in, with so much personal adversity, she has always been a remarkable parent, a remarkable daughter, a remarkable person in the church, a remarkable person everywhere. Funerals, we hear her great gift. This is a woman that is special, and she reminds me of that saying, that if you have something to do, give it to a busy person because she has never refused anyone anything I don't believe and I don't know how she accomplishes it. And the Sunshine Theater, this selection is, I think, the, the selection that shows us what a place we have in this community. 
you know, somebody that, you know, other than Sunshine offering the award, we might take for granted. A great, great talent. On a world stage, she would make us proud. Yeah. Here is Sandra. Yes, 
economics and everyday life. Just been handed this note. The city. The fight for civil rights continues. The American Civil Liberties Union just recently elected their first black president in the organization's 100 plus year history. Deborah Archer is a New York University School of Law professor specializing in civil rights and racial justice. A Yale Law graduate. Deborah got her start as a legal fellow with the ACLU for 1997-1998. In 2009, she became a member of the ACLU board. She's the eighth president of the American Civil Liberties Union. That is good news. Indeed, the fight for civil rights continues. The American Civil Liberties Union is a nonprofit organization founded in 1920 to defend and preserve the individual rights and liberties guaranteed to every person in this country by the Constitution and laws of the United States. And I think what I had to read now, I will say what I would like to say. <laughs> it's good to look at all of you here tonight. Some of you are well clad in your outfits. And I feel as a person from East End, Island Harbor, so I'm privileged to see all of you and to say thank you for coming to this part of the island. No one going to give you some history of my part of this island. I don't know how many of you know that some years ago there was this tourism master plan and Anguilla was divided into three sections. Island Harbor, which went as far as to Shoal Bay to encompass the fountain is known as a heritage part of the island. And reading here, yes they have a lot, but we too have quite a bit of heritage and our culture as well. Do you know that just outside there they used to build boats and then have to, I don't know how they, they, they did it, but I've seen it and I've read about it. Get them out to the sea and more importantly, outside of the reef, but they did it. Do you know that there's a reef which runs around about three miles around here and there are how many um, wrecks out there? Is it 21 or more? What do we have out there? We have a lot out there to check on. They said about the museum. How many of you have visited the Heritage Museum collection? You will see quite a lot, a lot of our history and our heritage and our culture. So I'm just going to invite all of you to come and visit the museum when it's open. If I'm there, I may consider you and let you in for the shop. And so, slavery, and there in that place you will see a book that lists the people who had slaves and the numbers of slaves they had. And I can tell you that when I saw that, I looked because I wanted to make sure none of my family's name was on there. Because I don't like slavery. I don't like what happened then. I don't like what is happening now. And because we are still enslaved, but there's a type of slavery that is worse than physical, and that is mental and slavery. So emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Good night and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marie. You have to look for that lovely presentation. Always count on, on Marie to have a little bit of history, either at the Black History Month celebration or at uh, at the banquet. She didn't uh, she didn't fail us this year at all.
as well. Okay, so I want us to acknowledge some of the persons that have made this lovely evening possible. I'm going to start off with our caterers. We are the, the sumptuous meal you had was catered by English Rose. Can I have a round of applause for English Rose? And this is the Harbor Rose. And this is Harbor Rose, also connected to English Rose. This lovely location. We also have to, as as Mrs. Webster said, we also have to give a round of applause for the president of the Sunshine Theatre Company and the founder director, Mrs. Felix and Mona Fleming. So regardless of the circumstances they face, they always try and put on this event and it's always a lovely and beautiful event uh, that they have every year and COVID-19 didn't deter them any one bit and we can always count on them for a very awesome evening. The, the also in your booklet you'll see some persons that have made this evening possible. Fair Play Agencies, the Anguilla Tourist Board, Coffee O'Clock. Can I get a round of applause as I go through? And Mrs. Alma Franklin always does the lovely decor. Uh, I had the privilege last year of seeing her in action and she walks very di diligently and she's very specific about how uh, she does her decor. So she is always one that can do a lot. She has given up her time to undertake this decor. Now that's dedication. We have DLG Engineering. Island Comprehensive Healthcare, and that is by our, our Honorable Premier Ellis Lorenzo Webster. So can we get a round of applause? Vantapool Water Delivery Services, Arian Freight and Customs Brokers, Warren's Alternative Affordable Funeral and Cremation Services. And those are some of the persons in addition to our uh, award sponsors that have made this event possible and we thank them uh, for their contribution to the success of this event. Okay, so we have our Oh, the ladies are getting ready for our feature presentation. It's a small play that is going to be put on. So stay put. Don't run away. We won't keep you here too long. There's a small play. It's very funny. You're going to love it, as I said. Uh, and the ladies are just about ready to come on and, and do that feature presentation. But until then, we'll go back to DJ Sugar for a little bit of entertainment. Award recipients up at the front so that we can get a photo 
for the newspaper, please. All the awards recipients, please make your way to the to the podium so that we can get a photo of you for the for the newspaper. Walk with your with your award flag, please. Thanks. Yeah. 
find a a girl? No, a boy. Let's look, look. Not this time though. We are the girl, and that's what we're gonna get. <laughs> I'll take anything as long as it's a baby. <laughs> I'm gonna have a girl. A nice baby girl. Cross big cookies with me. Just some dresses together. You know, Oma gets lonely for female companionship sometimes. And it would be nice to have a daughter to go shopping and someone I can take back to the bathroom. Sounds wonderful. We've already enrolled her in a class of 39 and I'll give it to her with a large fee on it. Boys are nice too. I'm afraid not yet. You will. But aren't you worried? No, not at all. I'm gonna have a girl. No, about your husband, George. He's as strong as an ox. He wants to have an even dozen. You know, I think the only reason they like to have babies is so they can get off of work for a few weeks. I heard they get them up the day after. After it happens. It's not like the old days. When my new Ellen had his bus, they kept him up just for three weeks after he came home. I heard they get them up the next day. Oh yes, the very next day. That's right. At least that's what it did with George after Ralph was born. I won't let them get John up the next day. I won't permit it. You won't have anything to say about it. The poor thing has had a tough enough time. He walked right up until the last minute. He was having a late business conference with his boss when he felt, well, when he realized what was happening. He phoned me right away and then he phoned his father. My father not came up after the first phone, but no more. He doesn't want to spend two weeks vacation here every year. I suppose after the first few, your husband starts to get used to it. So, five days after the last one, you and I was back at the office. It took George 10 days. There's really nothing to it. Why don't they tell us something? Why do they keep us in the dark? How do we know what's going on up there? My poor John! If only I could help him. If only I could have this baby for him. Relax. Take it easy. We'll never have another one, no matter how much he insists. I, I wouldn't be able to go through this ever again. Come on, sit down. <laughs> yeah, I always bring this along for you first timers. <laughs> no, 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 no. It wouldn't seem fair. Thank you. 
I'll take anything as long as it has two hands and two feet. I'll be bored. <laughs> it's a shame John's father couldn't have gotten here today. Send him a telegram. Mm -hmm. And phone him. I even bought some Chanel number no. five to hand up to the girls when I tell them the good news. Of course, I get the boss bottle. Of course, Shane. You're my good friend, and I'll be right here when you have your next. Just call me, and I'll be there to comfort you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I heard. No, is she alright? Sure. They're all taken differently. Congratulations! <laughs> You're a mother! I'm a mother! I'm a mother! I'm a mother! <laughs> Can I see my friend John now? He's sleeping, but she didn't see a dog. Let's go, Jane! If the men had to do the waiting, no couple would have a second baby. <laughs> That's so silly. There's nothing to it. It's like falling off a log. I'm going to have ten. And five girls and five boys. Isn't that wonderful, AJ? One every year. <laughs> Sugar, and then we'll be right back with another presentation. <laughs> 